If you want to learn Blender, this is the place to start. In these videos, we'll go over the basics of using Blender, from modeling to texturing to lighting. In this video, we set up the interface, learn to navigate around and create our first objects. Oh, and by the end, we make a monkey explode. Yeah, welcome to 3D modeling. All right, so let's get into it. So to download Blender, let's go to blender.org. I'll have a link in the description as well. Let's hit download, choose an operating system and choose a location closest to you. In my case, that's Denmark. It's going to start downloading. Once it's done, just open it up and run through the installer. So let's open up Blender. The version that I'm using is 2.78c, but I don't expect the stuff we'll cover here to change anytime soon. Let's get rid of this opening window by clicking anywhere on the screen. And welcome to Blender! Not a lot of people find the interface to be really daunting at first. Don't worry, as a beginner you won't be using 90% of the stuff you see here. The primary thing that we're going to be focusing on is the 3D viewport. That's the big one in the center here. This is where we do all of our modeling, where we change around objects and select them. That means that this is where most of the creative stuff happens. On the right here we have the properties panel. This is probably also the most scary one. You'll notice just how many knobs and dials there are here. This is used to modify things in our scene and some of the tabs modify the object that is currently selected. In our case we have the cube selected. So if we were to go to the materials panel and change the color of the material to let's say green, we can see that that modifies our cube. But if we then select our camera, we can see that the materials tab is gone because our camera does not have a material. Now let's undo that by hitting Ctrl Z a couple times. And some of you might have had a hard time I'm selecting the camera here. Maybe this happened. That's because Blender is a bit different and doesn't use left click to select. Instead we use right click and left click just moves around our 3D cursor. The 3D cursor is used for a few things, mainly it's the place where we spawn new objects. And it can be pretty annoying if you accidentally click somewhere and now everything you spawn is out here. So to reset that you can always hit shift C and it's going to snap right back to the center of our scene. Now before we start changing things around, let's go file, user preferences and this is where we configure Blender. You will see a lot of people using a different theme. If you go under themes and presets, there are a bunch of different ones to choose from. A very popular one is Elysian, but we'll just be using the default theme. On the input, we can adjust all of our keyboard shortcuts, of which there are many. By default, you can leave everything as is, but if you're using a keyboard without a number pad, maybe on a laptop without one, the number pad is the numbers to the right of your keyboard, you will probably want to go ahead and check Emulate Numpad. That's because we use the number pad a lot in Blender when adjusting our view, and checking this will allow you to use your normal number keys instead. Also, if you're really annoyed with having to right click to select, you can change that preference here. So now that we're satisfied with our settings, let's hit save user settings to make sure that they will be there next time we open Blender. So let's have a look at how we can navigate around our view. There are three main ways to move around in Blender. The first one is using our scroll wheel. This will zoom in and out. If you hold down the middle mouse button and drag, it will rotate around a certain pivot point. This allows us to view our object from multiple sides. And if we hold down shift and middle mouse button, we can pan around our scene. So using these three different ways of movement, we can quickly focus on different objects. And if you quickly want to snap to a certain object, you can always select it and hit period on the number pad to snap to it. In fact, if you get so lost that you can't even see your objects, you can always go up here. This is called the outliner and it shows all of the objects currently in our scene. We can then click the object that we want to snap to and hit period and there we go. The outliner can be really handy for selecting objects you can't see or hide objects that you don't want to focus on. We can also use the number pad to quickly view our scene from different sides. If we hit 7, we view it from above, 3 from the side and 1 from the front. However, if we go ahead and pan to the side here, you can see that we're still viewing things in perspective. And this is sometimes a good thing, but other times we actually just want to view things flat, in the same way that an architect would draw out different sides of a building. To do that, we hit five. This changes us into orthographic mode and it basically just removes perspective from our scene. So now everything is going to be viewed flat and we can still view it from above, the side and the front and we can even drag around here and still view things in orthographic mode. You can see up here which mode we're currently in. If we hit five again we switch back to perspective. This can of course be a bit confusing to the mind when you first get started but you'll quickly get used to switching between them and find out just how handy it is to be able to do that. So now that we know how to navigate around our scene let's start doing things. Let's begin by selecting the camera, holding down shift to select the light as well. Let's hit delete or X to remove it. Let's select our cube. And the first thing that we can do here is use the arrow keys to move it around our scene. An easier way to do this is simply hitting G for grab and we can now drag it around. When dragging things in freehand like this, it can be hard to get a grasp of where your object currently is in space. So instead of freely moving it, it's normal to have it snap to a certain axis. We can hit X to only move it around the X axis, Z to move it along the Z axis and Y to move it along the Y. If we left click, 
We go through with the movement, but if we right click, it snaps back. Other than moving our object, we can also rotate it. To do that, we hit R. Again, we can rotate it in freehand or around the X, Z and Y axis. And finally, we can hit S to scale. By default, we scale on all axes around the center. You've guessed it, we can also choose to only scale on the X, the Z and the Y. So we can now manipulate objects the way that we want. And so we can start building cool stuff. If for example, we were to delete this cube, hit Shift A to bring up a menu. This menu allows us to spawn new objects into a scene. There's a lot of different stuff here, but what we are going to be working with is everything underneath the mesh tab. And these are basic primitives that you can work off of. Let's begin by spawning in a cube here. Let's scale it down on the Z axis. Let's grab it and move it up on the Z axis as well. Let's then hit Shift A and let's spawn in a cylinder. Let's scale this down quite a bit but scale it up on the z-axis we can then hit 7 to view this from the top to get a better view we go down here this allows us to change from solid to wireframe mode and we can now see the cylinder through the cube we then hit grab to move it and let's move it to the edge here to duplicate an object we hit shift D and we can move this over to the right as well let's now select both of them by holding down shift and right clicking and let's duplicate both and move those down to the bottom. If we now shift back into solid mode, hit 5 to switch back to perspective, we've created a table. Now there are about a million different things that we could do to make this cooler, but you have to start somewhere and congratulations on your first model. If the banding on the cylinders here is really annoying you, you can select all of them and go up here and change the shading to smooth. That should help sort that out. If we now were to select all of the objects and remove them and instead go ahead and add a monkey. The monkey head here is Blender history. It's been there for so many years and it's been used for pretty much everything. It's been blown up, shattered and put into environments of all sorts. So you'll probably be seeing a lot of this guy. Let's just do something fun and go ahead and make him shatter. To do that we hit space to bring up our search menu and this is a really cool part of Blender. If there's something that you don't remember the shortcut to or can't find in the menus or maybe you just get an idea of something that you want to do but don't know how, try searching for it. For example if we wanted to add a sphere we search for add sphere and you get options for the different spheres you can add. If we hit add UV sphere, boom, there's a sphere in our scene. But now we want to make this guy explode. Let's go in here and write explode. There's an option called quick explode. If now we go down here and hit play, we can see him shattering. This here is the animation window and you can scrub through to any point in time. We won't be using this too much, but it's cool to know about. So I really encourage you to take what you've learned here and go completely nuts with it. Don't be afraid to change around dials and adjust knobs. You can also mess around with the interface all that you want. If you feel you get completely lost, don't worry. All you need to do to restore your settings is go back to file, new, and voila, everything gets reset. That's properties, interface, and everything you've done with your scene. So go nuts and save often. That's pretty much it for this video. If you enjoyed it, make sure to subscribe so you don't miss the next one. I upload Sundays and Wednesdays. Also, this is of course a bit different from my usual video. Normally I do tutorials on game development. Most of them are on using my favorite piece of software, which is Unity. So if you're interested in game development, I have a course here for complete beginners. Oh, and to my loyal subscribers, don't worry, I'll still be doing plenty of Unity tutorials. Other than that, thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video. Thanks to all of the awesome Patreon supporters who donated in April and a special thanks to Derek Heemskirk, Faisal Marify, James Callahan, Cyborg Mummy, Cole Cabral and Jason the Tito. If you want to become a patron yourself you can do so at patreon.com slash brackies.